Hi there and welcome to this look at the 14 day weather prospects. It's a very soggy start in parts of the country. Now does that set the theme for the next two weeks? I'll begin by taking a look at the picture across Europe and the North Atlantic. So here we go. This is 12 GMT on Tuesday the 19th of January. What we can see shown by the yellow and green shading is outbreaks of heavy rain affecting parts of Northern England, Northern Ireland and Western Wales. That wet weather is all associated with a deep area of low pressure to the southwest which has been named Storm Christoph by the UK Met Office. It is going to continue influencing the weather in the short term so I'll play the sequence and we can see what happens. Here we go and I'm just going to pause it here at 15 GMT on Wednesday the 20th of January. By then we can see the low pressures move northeastwards and it's becoming centred over parts of uh, northern parts of England and we still got very very heavy outbreaks of rain affecting parts of uh, Wales and northern England at this time pushing perhaps into central areas too. On their northern edge you can see they are increasingly turning to uh, sleet or snow that's because to the north of this area of low pressure we've got colder air packing in and that is going to become a player uh, later later on as I'll try and show you now if I resume the sequence. Here we go and we're going into Friday at 15 GMT um, and what we can see by then is much colder air is pushing down from northwest across the UK as low pressure uh, the remains of Storm Christoph pull away there into the North Sea, head up towards Scandinavia. And increasingly across the UK, showers are turning to sleet or snow as the temperatures drop. Now, as often is the case in this type of setup, the most frequent showers look like being in northern areas and parts of the west too, uh, with, with snow progressively more likely as you, as you head north and uh, go over higher ground. In the south, it's uh, it's a drier scene. There should be quite a lot of sunshine around, but I think there will be some uh, some showers bubbling up and uh, uh, pushing quite far inland at times. I'm just going to start the sequence again, and the thing to keep an eye on is this area of rain to the southwest. If I just begin it here, and we can see what happens. By 09 GMT on Saturday the 23rd of January, that area of low uh, rain is, is tracked eastwards and it's, it's associated with a deepening, a forming area of low pressure, uh, which, which is heading on this uh, sequence across northern France with the uh, precipitation on its northern edge just pushing into southeastern England. Now there is some uncertainty about that. There's always a chance that that low pressure will uh, take a different track. It may deepen a little more, deepen less, head further south or further, uh, further north. Of course, if it heads a little further north, that brings an increase in risk of longer outbreaks of rain in southern parts of England this Saturday and the possibility of them turning to sleet or snow as they bump into that colder air which is uh, which is which is in place across across the United Kingdom. And we can also see wintry showers in the west and the northwest of the UK. Some of those are probably going to be falling as sleet or snow down to low levels and accumulations are a possibility particularly in the north and over high ground. So it is a generally cold picture across the UK through the weekend. I'll resume sequence so we can see what looks like happening in the early part of next week. But do remember at this stage it's very much a case of focusing on the big picture rather than the details because they are subject to a lot of change at this range. Here we are at 15 GMT on Tuesday the 26th of January. By then what we can see is a, an area of low pressure in its weather fronts pushing in from the Atlantic. Uh, that's bringing outbreaks of heavy rain which are pushing uh, northeastwards across the UK and on their leading edge they're readily turning to sleet or snow. As I said 
do not pay attention to the details at this range. However, I think there is a reasonable chance of heavy snow affecting parts of the northern half of the UK during this period as weather fronts uh, push in from the Atlantic and, and make their way northeastwards. It also means it's likely to be turning milder in the southern half of the country and particularly the southwest. What about the longer term picture? Well, to help answer that, I'll bring up the uh, 16 day ensemble plots. This one is for London. And on the top half, we've got upper air temperatures. So those are at about 1500 meters above sea level. The thick black line running right across shows the 30 year average. Uh, we can see in the short term, so in the next day or two, um, they are above that thick black line. They then drop below it. So it becomes rather cold as, uh, as I've just been discussing in the um, sequence. It stays cold for several days. And then by around about the 26th of January, there's a clear upwards trend here uh, showing milder conditions returning and then continuing for several days, uh, at least until around about the 1st of February, at which point there's uh, a trend towards somewhat colder conditions. Again, it's not very marked. It's, it's something to keep an eye on, but at the moment it's just it's just looking pretty average as we uh, go into the beginning of February. Um, having said that, there are one or two very cold runs in the ensemble, uh, but they are in a very uh, they are in a very small minority at this stage. Across the uh, the bottom, the precipitation forecasts uh, they're showing an ongoing risk of rain or possibly during this colder period sleet or snow uh, the the snow row there is reaching a maximum value of 13 around about the 23rd or 24th of january the highest it can be is 33 so 13 suggesting just over a 30 about 35 percent chance of sleet or snow falling on that day as i always like to point out it does not mean sleet or snow will be accumulating it simply means that there could be a shower with a few flakes of snow mixed into it if i just quickly jump across to cardiff uh, on the air mass part of the plot it's it's actually very similar to the london one however across the bottom it's uh, the precipitation showing a wetter picture Oh, and at times it's actually looking very wet in the, in the short term as, uh, as, as we saw in the sequence but also at times towards the end of this month the last few days could well be very wet. If I go up to Glasgow to take a look at the northwest of the UK once more it's quite similar. Um, the, the colder conditions develop in the short term the snow row values are higher than they are in southern England. Um, that really fits in with what I was talking about. So there certainly is a higher chance of sleet or snow the further north you go during the, uh, during the first week of the forecast period. It then, around about the 27th of January, probably turns milder, although at this stage the details are somewhat uncertain. Uh, but, but most of the runs are bringing in upper air temperatures close to or above the uh, 30 year average. So it looks like that milder air pushing in from the west or the southwest will be reaching northwestern parts of the UK at least for a time. Towards the end of this plot, in the early part of February, there's a downward trend in upper air temperatures and it's certainly more marked than it was in London. And uh, it is it is suggesting a greater risk of cold conditions returning in the north and in the south of the UK during the, the, the early part of February. I'll quickly bring up the uh, 10 day 2 meter temperature anomaly plots. Um, so these are ones we experienced down at the surface rather than the ones way above our head. What we can see is blue shading is used to highlight below average temperatures over the time period and orange or brown shading above average. 
so most of the UK is covered in blue for the next 10 days indicating that it's going to be a little bit colder than the 1981-2010 uh, average at least according to the mean of this ensemble model run the exception is the south and west or parts of the south and west where it's uh, slightly above the 30-year uh, norm I think that's in large part due to the uh, mild start in these areas Another way of looking at the two meter temperature outlook is the data table. So here we go. This one is for London. What it does is show the percentage of runs in the ensemble middle model which fit into each category. So purple shading indicates minus nine Celsius or lower. I suspect we'll not be seeing too many of those in the short term at least. Light blue is minus 8 Celsius to 0 Celsius and they progressively increase as, as you can see uh, until we get to the pinky red which highlights 30 Celsius or greater um, and I'll be a little bit worried if we find many runs in that category in the short term. So we can see the date across the top here um, each column represents one day. I think what's worth noting is that um, in the in the short term, so later uh, 22nd of January, 23rd of January, uh, most of the runs have fallen into the one Celsius to five Celsius maximum temperature category. So so it's looking pretty cold. It's not looking very cold. I, I think I really should make that point. It's looking cold or rather cold, but not very cold. Now, as we go through the last week of uh, January, what we can see is fewer runs. So the percentage begins to fall in the one Celsius to five Celsius category. It begins to increase in the six Celsius to 10 Celsius block. So that we can see by the 28th of January, there are 52% of the runs in that milder six to 10 Celsius category, then increases to 74%. It, tails away a little bit towards the end as a number of cold runs begin to appear once again and a few very cold runs appear perhaps but 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 generally the the message there is that we've got colder conditions in the short term until about the uh, 26th or the 27th of, of January as I was highlighting in the, in the 16 day plots it then turns milder or there's a high likelihood of it turning milder. We've even got 32% of runs on the 30th of January in the 11 Celsius to 15 Celsius bucket, which would indicate, um, well, so not warm, but 15 Celsius, if it reached that, would be, uh, would be very, very mild for, uh, for late January. It's worth quickly taking a look at the comparable table for Glasgow. Because although the trend towards mild conditions towards the end of January is still present, it's not as marked as it is in the south. In fact, by the 30th, what we can see is 32% of the runs are in the 6 Celsius to 10 Celsius bucket, but 42%, which is the biggest cluster, remain in the 1 Celsius to 5 Celsius, and we've got some which are colder again in 23% of the 0 Celsius to minus 8 Celsius range. So it's not as mild as in the south um, and indeed at the very end what we can see is the number of cold runs is increasing again um, so that by the 3rd of February 55% which you could probably just see behind the, uh, behind the marker are in the 0 Celsius to minus 8 Celsius maximum range. So that's the next 16 days. I'll just very quickly show you the latest 35 day plot from the GEFS. Um, what we can see there is this one's for London. You can see the milder conditions expected in late January, but then it's shown to be turning colder in February. And for much of the first half, temperatures, upper air temperatures remain close to or below the 30 year average. But remember, as I would say, that's a tremendously long way off in weather terms, and I'm only showing this to give an idea of what the uh, what the ensemble plots are indicating at the moment. Winter may come back in February. We'll see. 
So to summarize, Storm Christoph brings very wet and windy weather to parts of the UK in the short term. As it pulls away northeastwards, rain in northeastern Britain increasingly turns to sleet or snow. Colder air then pushes southwards for several days with wintry showers developing in the north and west. There's a low to moderate possibility of longer spells of uh, rain, sleet or snow pushing across southern Britain during the first weekend of this forecast period. During next week, it's looking pretty changeable with areas of low pressure moving uh, eastwards or northeastwards across Britain. They bring the risk of sleet or snow, particularly to the north, but in the, in the south, rain is more likely as milder air returns. And there is a chance, at least for a time, of that milder air returning to all parts of the country. In early February, the uh, current signal is for it to probably begin to turn colder once again in the north, but in the south, it's, uh, things are less certain. So thank you very much for watching. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. And I'm delighted to say there's more than a thousand people now on this channel. So, so it's growing nicely. Long may that continue. And thank you for your support. Cheers now. Bye.